When Concorde Alpha Foxtrot landed at Filton in November 2003, to most it was coming home to the local airfield where Concorde was assembled over 20 years ago. Filton Airfield was where the 10 UK Concords were put together after the parts were shipped in from the BAC factory at Weybridge and various sites in France. After Concorde went into service, the remaining flight development testing was flown out of the airfield using the third British-built Concorde. When the flight test programme came to an end on Christmas Eve 1981, the third UK-built Concorde and the nation's first production model was put into storage on the site. In 1984, the aircraft was quietly acquired by British Airways for spares, but it stayed firmly hidden away since that date until now. Concorde 202 Golf Bravo Bravo Delta Golf was offered to Brooklands Museum for restoration and eventual display in October 2003. The forgotten Concorde, which played such an important role in certifying the aircraft for passenger services, would find a permanent home at Brooklands, the site where many of the major parts, such as the forward and rear fuselage sections, were built. Inside the aircraft, it's been stripped of the majority of its flight deck instruments and interior panelling. Being a test aircraft only, a partial interior would have been fitted for the majority of the flight tests. The first task for the museum volunteers was to round up all the useful parts available in the storage hangar at Filton and then box them up for forwarding to Brooklands. Similarly, British Airways would deliver major parts from Heathrow, such as the landing gear, droop nose, radome and rudders. Over 20 40-foot trailers have so far been used to deliver parts into the museum. Concorde is over 200 feet long and 75 feet wide and unlike a conventional airliner the Delta wing is not removable making transport very difficult. After consulting design engineers from Concorde's production days a plan was formulated to move the aircraft the 125 miles to Brooklands in five main sections after all the removable parts had been taken off. Before work got underway, Delta Golf was rolled out of her storage hangar. This allowed a thorough visual record to be made of her before the nominated contractor, Air Salvage International, or ASI, began work. Although the aircraft at first glance looked to be in very poor condition, further investigation revealed she was in excellent shape. Over the years, yellow primer paint had been applied to prevent any corrosion on areas where the paintwork had been stripped for testing or where there was the possibility of corrosion. Delta Golf's original landing gear had been removed and stripped for spares use in 1990. To keep the aircraft mobile, a slave undercarriage was constructed to the exact same design of the one used to move assembled Concords around the Filton site in the 60s and 70s. The tail fin was removed and placed on a storage jig inside the hangar. When the hangar was built in 1989, it was decided it was cheaper to take the fin off, as constructing a hangar to take the full height would have doubled the cost. The first job the contractors had to do was prepare the inside of the fuselage where the cuts would be made. This included stripping all wiring and ducting under the floors.
Phase one also included removing the outer wings, tail cone, engine air intakes and twin secondary nozzles, all of which would simply unbolt from the main structure. The forward wing would also be removed to save it being cut through. With Phase 1 removals complete, Brooklands called on the services of CJ Systems and Queen's Motors to assist in moving the sections to the museum. A special jig was constructed to allow the outer wings and tail fin to be transported at an angle to prevent it being classified as a wide load. Museum staff and volunteers helped unload the lorries at the museum site. The sections were to be stored ahead of restoration and eventual reinstallation to the aircraft. By mid-April, the contractors were back on site at Filton after reinstalling the undercarriage on Alpha Alpha at East Fortune. Phase two of the plan required the aircraft to be worked on outside as the hangar was too low for cranes to safely operate. Delta Golf was rolled past the famous Brabazon hangar where she'd been built over 30 years ago and towed to an area called Palm Beach at Filton area where aircraft were traditionally scrapped, except this time the ending would have a far happier outcome. With the aircraft firmly secured, ASI removed the forward and rear fuselage sections and the same day they were transported by Queen's Motors back home to Brooklands, coming into the museum up the famous runway from which they departed nearly 35 years ago. The museum's heavy lifting vehicles, accompanied by National Rescue's Brooklyn's Bell, unloaded both sections and placed them in front of the Wellington hangar for temporary storage.
The following day, some of Delta Golf's original test pilots and flight crew were at the museum to toast her arrival and be photographed for the local media. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Filton, work was continuing apace, with the aircraft being jacked to allow the slave undercarriage to be removed. The aircraft's jacking points would be on the wing sections that were to be removed for the fuselage. The aircraft would rest on a tower of railway sleepers before being loaded for the trip to the museum. The cut line was defined roughly three feet from the fuselage. This would ensure that no section of the aircraft would be too wide for transportation. The false spars that made up the landing gear torsion box structure were also removed to ensure they wouldn't need to be cut. A special set of hydraulic jacks were placed under the wings to support them during cutting and aid removal from the aircraft. A diamond-tipped grinder was used to remove the wing from the aircraft as it would cut through both the wing skins and supporting spar and rib structure. With the wing free, the special jacks came into their own and lowered the wing away and down from the fuselage. Tractors and the haulier proceeded to load both wings onto the 70-foot flatbed truck for the journey up the M4 motorway to Brooklyn. The proposed repair of the wing sections will involve placing doublers onto the cut spars on both the fuselage and wing side of the cut. The sections will be rejoined and held in place by bolts before repairing the wing skins. The aircraft without the wings was now 95 feet long and 16 feet wide, a load that could easily be moved on the UK's roads. The 125-mile journey to Weybridge was covered in good time and the load arrived at the museum shortly after 11pm.
With the wings safely at Brooklands, the focus of the work returned to Filton, where the 95-foot-long centre fuselage section was loaded. A delay of a week had occurred before the fuselage was moved to avoid clashing with a busy bank holiday weekend. The following morning at 10.55, with the local roads temporarily closed, the load was backed out of the Filton crash gate onto the A38. The sheer size of the load meant it had to overhang the opposite carriageway as it reversed out and headed for the M5 and M4. Many motorway bridges had spectators waiting to see Concord 202 pass underneath on her journey home. Once off the M25, the haulage contractor faced the biggest challenge yet, getting his abnormal load down the twisty Byfleet Road and into the museum. The A245, like the A38 at Filton, was temporarily closed to traffic to allow the load to pass. Once at the bottom of the road, Delta Golf, on the back of her low loader, negotiated the three roundabouts with surprisingly little difficulty and headed onto the Brooklyn's estate and up the disused runway that leads to the museum. Several hundred enthusiasts and VIPs were at the museum to greet the aircraft, including the trustees of the museum, local dignitaries and the museum's patron, His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Kent. After a short break for the team that travelled from Bristol, the load was reversed over the River Way and into the museum, this time so it would be facing the correct way for reassembly and future display. The 
museum had laid on a champagne reception for Concorde's arrival. All the contributors to the museum's Concorde fundraising appeal had been invited to witness the historic moment and be thanked for their continued support. With six aircraft jacks securely in place, the low loader was driven out from under the load to a round of applause from the onlookers. After more than six months of planning and work, Concord Delta Golf was now finally home at Brooklands, where over the coming months and years she'll be restored to her former glory.